Now let's talk about the visualization and exploratory data analysis portion of the exam. Okay, so first we're given three um, box plots and part A is asking us which piece of information is not communicated by these box plots. Um, well, so it's not the quartiles, the lower and upper, um, you know, 25th and 75th percentiles in the median because a box plot tells us exactly that. So it's not the second option. A simple, simple comparison between the distributions. No, we get to see that. We get to see sort of where, where the mean is relative to the median, what some of the outliers are. We get to see that. And the outliers, again, um, that's represented by the dots at the top. What we don't get to see in this box plot is the number of observations in each box. So it turns out the correct answer for this one is the first. Using only the box plot, we can tell that the tip distribution appears to be Okay, well, so we can't tell whether it's unimodal or bimodal, okay? Um, because that information really isn't conveyed by a box plot. So it can't be one of the first two options. Now, it's just whether or not it's skewed left or skewed right. And it turns out that it's skewed right because suppose we were to, you know, rotate this box plot horizontally, we'd see that the right tail is longer than the left tail. Okay, right tail is longer. It tells us that the tip distribution is skewed to the right. Okay, 19, which of the following changes will most effectively improve the following plot to communicate the relationship between X and Y? Will removing the outliers do anything? No, not really, because the issue we have is that all the val um, values are concentrated in one area. So it's getting rid of the outliers it wouldn't really change anything. It doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of outliers anyways. Could we display a 1D histogram? That also doesn't make sense because a 1D histogram is only meant to plot a single continuous variable, but here we're looking at the relationship between two continuous variables, so that doesn't make sense. And changing the scale of X and Y. Um, that doesn't seem like you would do much, at least compared to the other option, which is the correct one. Right, because again, the issue is that we have many, many values in one area, and even if we stretch out the x and y axes, that could still be an issue. Whereas if we change the dot size and or add some transparency, we would be able to see which areas, you know, with more with darker colors are more um, populated. Right, and that's that's a trick that we've seen time and time again in the textbook and in lecture. Right, changing the transparency and the size of these dots. Okay, so that's question 19. In 20, we want to consider this data frame Compass DF and this HIV-1 infections um, visualization, right? And or we're asked which plotting mistake best characterizes a plot problem with this plot. And so the weird part about this plot is that it's using angles to try and um, depict magnitude, right? So it's not any of the other options. The issue is that it's trying to tell us that the greater the angle is from here, the, the larger the uh, value is, but that's not immediately obvious. Okay, so that's probably the biggest issue with this plot. The original intent of this plot was to demonstrate that the second born child has a lower risk of HIV-1 infection. Which of the following snippets of code would generate a plot that best illustrates this trend? So what we'd probably want is some sort of bar graph, right, for both, um, the first born child and the second born child, maybe put them in different colors, and we'd have different bars for caesarean, um, overall, and vaginal, right? And we would have the heights be the different percentages, and we put them in different colors, so it makes it easy to compare the different distributions, okay? So we notice we probably want one of the ones where the hue is born order, so we can get rid of delivery, okay? Um, and it makes sense that we want our X to be delivery. Okay, so that, that's just telling us we'll have different bars for each of the different delivery types. Y is the percent. And our data is the compass data frame. Okay, so the reason we're choosing option one instead of option three is because we want a bar plot instead of a box plot. Okay. Um, a bar plot will more effectively convey this information, so that it's a little easier to read this information if we're looking at just sort of a bar graph, whereas um, it's not necessarily clear that that information would be um, effectively conveyed from a box plot, right? Um, and that's essentially it for that question, okay? So now for 21, 
We uh, supposedly constructed a data set about meals at restaurants around Berkeley, and the following is just a sample of that um, data set. So for each of these following scenarios, we want to determine which type of plot is most appropriate to reveal the distribution and the relationships between the following variables. In A, we want the spread of the total bill for each day um, of the week, right? And so this is very similar to the violin plots you made in project two, looking at the average trip durations in New York City for the different days, right? We had um, seven side-by-side -side violin plots, right? And this is very similar here, right? Um, we want side-by-side -side block box plots because they will tell us, you know, the mean, or uh, visually at least, uh, that we'll have the 25th, 75th, and median, some of the outliers. Um, whereas if we use a bar plot, we'd only be able to plot the, um, let's say, average of the total bill for each day of the week, right? Um, and a scatter plot doesn't really make sense because for a scatter plot, you need two continuous variables, but here we have one continuous variable and one category, and a contour plot doesn't really make sense here. Okay? In B, the distribution of the tip field for the meals at um, this one specific restaurant. So now, since we're looking at just one continuous variable, which is the tips for this one specific restaurant, to um, display the values of one continuous variable, we usually like to look at a histogram, right? And this is something that we've seen many times. Right? We have a continuous variable, the histogram will bin our variable into different um, segments, and then the heights will represent the proportions um, of the random of the variable that were in those bins. Okay. Um, C average tip for meals on each day from January 2017 to January 2018. Now we're trying to look at some sort of trend, and for these we'd like to use line plots, right? So our x-axis can be time, our y-axis can be the average tip. And in D, the number of meals for each place in 2017. This makes sense to use a bar plot for, right? Because we have multiple categories, um, and there's not really a distribution here. It's really just restaurant and number, right? And so does, a histogram doesn't make sense because we're not dealing with a continuous variable. We're just really dealing with a mapping of restaurant names and numbers. Box plots also wouldn't make sense because we just really have one number. And a scatter plot, again, wouldn't make sense because we only have one variable that's numerical, not two. 22, what additional information does the violin plot on the right provide that is not present in the box plot on the left? Um, well, it's not the first option because we have no way of knowing what the number of observations is, so we can get rid of that. It's not the third option because it does not show the number of missing values. And so now it's between the second and fourth. So the second says the violin plot shows the underlying distribution into each group, i.e., or e.g., we observe a bimodal distribution in group B. And that's true. We see in group B um, there are two two modes, it's bimodal, and that's not something that's conveyed in the box plot on the left. So for this one, the correct option is the second one. And that wraps up the uh, visualizations portion of this exam.